Hui! Marshall. <laughs> All right, right now it's raining in Trinidad. I like it. Don't want to stop, but the mats must go on. I haven't been recording much recently, so I want to get one out. Let's do something on indices. So as usual, we'll be keeping along with the Caribbean Examination Council CSEC mats, nah. So this will be a nice, neat revision and exactly what you need to know for CSEC mats indices. You should recall that if you have a number like two to the power of five and you want to express that out, expand that. That means two multiplied by itself five times one two three four five man i can count right so that's how it's expressed this this number here represents the index and this is the number of times it's repeated everybody should know that if you're watching this video you should at least know that right but a trap students fall into is sometimes they watch this and they say okay this is five twos this is five twos five twos five twos and then they go and they write it like two to the power of five means five by two and then they come and they say, so look how brilliant I am. No, don't do this. This number here would give me 10. But if I multiply the numbers out on top, I will actually get 32. It's different. It's totally different, right? So 2 to the power 5 is not 5 times 2. Come on, mistake people make when they're now starting up on indices. Don't be that guy. All right, so pay attention to this one because this is the law of indices or these are the laws of indices, the four main laws that comes directly from your syllabus. So they should ring a bell. I'm going to go through every single one of them and show you the example very quickly. It's a nice quick video and show you the example. But you should also know before we go into that, that there are some extra laws. Well, some textbooks have them as laws. Some textbooks have them as laws, but it's just like little things you should know about indices. Any number to the power of one is itself. Any number to the power of zero is one. And there's a little neat trick you need to know for fractional indices as well. But let's go into the main laws. So the first law, x to the power of m multiplied is a multiply sign. It says if there's a multiply sign, man, you just add those powers like a boss. Add up those powers there and feel good about yourself. Here's an example. x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 6. We add the 3 and the 6 and we get 9. Okay, simple. Let's move on. Oh, there's a next example here that I included that's, that makes use of the distributive law as well. Notice how the x to the power of 2 multiplies by the x to the power of 3. So I get x to the power of 5. I kind of skip this step where I show you that. And then the x to the power of 2 will multiply by the x to the power of 1. So I will get x to the power of 3. So it's like I use the law twice just now. This is vibes. But let me go forward. The second law says that if it's a division sign, remember the bases must be the same, eh? x here and x there. But if it's a division sign and we have m and n, then we will subtract so in this example we have a divided by five what am i saying so in this example we have a to the power of five over a squared subtract get your answer nice and straightforward right here's one that's a little more um complicated but you just need to watch the the common terms so like your the so the 2 over 8, you deal with the numbers first, break that down. Then you deal with these two, x to the power of 6 over x squared. So that will simplify to x to the power of 4. And then you deal with the y's. But since there's only one y term, you just leave him by himself. So the answer will look something like this. 1 over 4, or a quarter, x to the power of 4, and y to the power of 5. The third, the third law deals with what happens if a power happens to go to another power. So notice this is x to the power of m. And what if we raise him up again and next power to the power of n? So this is x this is this is powerception. So this is power in a power, x to the power of m to the power of n. Well, if that happens, the rule says just multiply the two powers by each other. So we have if we have x to the power of 7 squared, the answer is gonna be x to the power of 14. Alright, so in this example, we had x to the power of 7 raised to the power of 2. Well, you simply multiply the 7 by 2 and you get 14. But don't mix it up like this. This is not the same thing. These two things are different. And this is the next common mistake that students make. So if you multiply, you add. But if it's raised to a power, you would have to do the multiplying. It's, it's kind of weird. It'll take a little time to get used to. That's where you're going to do real examples. But let's look at the, the last law. This is where we have a negative index or a negative power. This is how you would express it. You invert and you use the positive power. So this is really the 
multiplicative inverse going on here. So an example is if we have three to the negative two, we just express it as three squared, but make sure the three squared is under one. Simple, right? In this next example, we had x to the power of seven by x to the power of negative three. So what we want to do is we could just use the first law where we add it and get the answer, right? So the first law we add and we got that seven plus negative three. So you just look out for the negative three when you add in, so you'll get four. Or what we can do is change around this negative three and express it like this and then subtract. So we'd have seven take away three and we'll end up with the same answer that we got from here. So there's just, this is just like the long way around of doing it. All right, so here are some CXC style questions. Lubia talks off on the phone, a girl. What happened? All right, so before we go, here are nine questions for you all to do. Um, you have the easy questions, the little boy questions. You have the harder ones and then the even harder questions. Let's see who can get all nine. The first person to get all nine, I will pin your comments so people can just bask in your brilliance and check their answers as well. 